This is a Recording King Dirty 30s, and we're doing this as part of a, a pool guitar where a couple of us, um, six of us actually, put in some money. We buy this guitar, we pass it around every couple of weeks, or every whatever weeks, and then at the end we sell it, whatever. It's a fun way to uh, try out a guitar, and I got in on the pool because this is a, you know, this is a guitar I wouldn't normally um, look at, consider buying. I don't get any of these in for work because it's a, you know, it's an expensive guitar. People don't want to put a lot of money in it. So I got in on it and um, just to see what we have here. And this is it straight fresh out of the box. The action is super, super low on it. It's about 75 thousandths of an inch here on the low E. Uh, I would prefer more like about 90 thousandths. It probably buzzes quite a bit, but uh, here it is. This is what it looks like. Now it's good to have a low action because it has a nice saddle. Got a lot of saddle height on it here. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually raise the action up, raise the saddle, and um, that's good. That's a whole lot better than having a high action or low saddle because then, well, then you're in trouble. Everything else looks really good on it. The nut height is great. The spacing at the nuts is really good. Um, it could be spaced out a little bit further to give more of a wider feel, but it's not bad. And, um, you know, for what it is, about a $300 guitar, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty fun sit on the couch guitar, uh, put a pickup on it, play it out, you know, whatever. And um, it's got clues and copy tuners on it. They've got cheap little plastic buttons, which is kind of in keeping with the motif of this guitar. It's an inexpensive 1930s guitar. It has a really thin, light, light, light finish on it. I don't think there'll ever be any problems with finish checking or anything like that. Um, Structure-wise, it looks like it came out of the same factory that did, it is a recording king, the same factory that does uh, Blue Ridge, uh, Epiphones, you know, whatnot. I have an Epiphone EF500 Sunburst. It looks exactly like this. The bracing looks exactly the same. Um, looks like they used a little CNC machine to cut the bracing. The finish is the same, the same sort of matte thin finish like this. Looks to me like they all come out of the same factory in China. But it is what it is, and um, it's kind of a fun little guitar. So I'll play a couple, a couple more tunes on it. That was just a little blues deal that it's just, um, no, I don't know what kind of music you'd play on this. You'd play just about anything, I guess. You'd want. It's not a bluegrass guitar, but um, it's a fun guitar. You know, it'd make a fantastic travel guitar. Why go with a. Um, you know, a backpack or something like that, unless you need it for the small size. You can get something like this, take it as a travel guitar. If something happens to it, it's not the end of the world. It is small, you know. It didn't fit in a little gig bag and wouldn't take any room at all. It's got a nice neck on it. The neck's slim. It's very, very slim uh, front to back. has kind of a, a C shape, not a D, uh, uh, flat back sort of shape to it. So you can make bar chords really easy if you want to. Not much V to it at all. You know, I would prefer a chunkier neck, but um, whatever. It's just not bad. You can get around on it. So here's what it would sound like and uh, maybe a fiddle tune. Not bad. Recording King Dirty Thirties.